Greetings, gentlemen. I have gathered you all here so that we may devise a way to release Matthew's chaos power and destroy all of reality. Count Rainier thread the of the universe RVEW-2312, an alternate version of Count CGI. Evil Batman of Universe DC-000 AM. I'm back. Yes, I know who you are. And Dark Decade who does not belong to any universe. Go forth and drive Matt to the breaking point. I'll go first then. It's not that I doubt my own abilities, but you two fine gentlemen are far more suited for the job and we should save the best for last, yes? Greetings, I am Count Rainier Thredda. I am holding you against your will to make you review crappy rendered 3D movies. You know, I'm experiencing an odd sense of deja vu. Maybe it's just a concussion. Also, I suddenly have a newfound respect for the name Count CGI. What? Well, allow me to explain. You see, I've been seeing the term CGI abused a lot lately to refer solely to 3D animation. It's even gotten to the point where the Red vs. Blue wiki was using the term to refer to the animation done in Poser, in spite of the fact that all 3D graphics are CGI. I mean, I know there's a difference between pre-rendered and uh, active CGI, but yeah, I did go ahead and fix that issue, talk to the wiki administrator, but that's not important. Of course, uh, 2D animation on a computer is also CGI, and I fear that some people may have actually forgotten this fact. What does this have to do with my name and this Count CGI fellow? I'm getting to that. But first, let me just make it clear that he is not from the Cartoon Heroes show. You see, I had been watching Cartoon Heroes Review Show lately, cringing as constant abuse of CGI, and even when it looked like he was actually starting to complain about 2D CGI, he went and called it traditional. I mean, it's good to acknowledge the existence of 2D CGI and all, but the fact of the matter is that traditional is what would best be described as analog art as opposed to digital. Anyway, during that time, he was working with a villain not too unlike yourself, that being Count CGI, who was a villain made in Render 3D, just like us. Oh, I see. Well, maybe it would help if I forced you to review a crappy 2D CGI animation quite clearly made on a computer. And why would you be helping me? Because it's the worst animation ever made by a proper production studio. The newborn cuties cartoons. Well, Shifta. Uh, roll the intro, story writer? Fan base tends to have mixed feelings about past Lady Little Pony cartoons, but generally agree that Generation 3 and Generation 3.5 were horrible and try to pretend that Hasbro did not force Lauren Faust to recycle all of the ponies from Generation 3 instead of being allowed to bring back the ponies who never made it past Generation 1, such as her favorite, Firefly. 
At least Applejack and Spike managed to survive all three past generations. For better or for worse. However, there was another Generation 3 cartoon, and no, it's not 3.5 as I already mentioned that one. It's one that most Boronies probably tried to outright forget. You could call it Generation 3.75 or just part of Generation 3.5 and it's officially named Once Upon a My Little Pony Time So Many Different Ways to Play and Over Two Rainbows. Not to be confused with the double rainbow or that stunt rainbow dash pulled in the comics. Whoa! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! Well, I've reviewed enough stuff that I've actually liked lately, so let's just jump right into the bottom of the barrel. I'm not wasting any time getting to this one. Now, I know, My Little Pony was a show targeted to little girls. So having baby versions of the ponies was something you'd expect from a toy company, so I can't really complain too much about the concept. But the concept isn't even the real problem. The real problem is what I currently consider to be literally the worst computer-generated imagery of all time from a legit production studio, as in those who make actual animations and not Mockbusters. This... This is just... Be sure to get my good side. <laughs> Never mind, they're both good. And don't forget... They just didn't care! So, yeah, if you thought Generation 1 Tyrk was disturbing, well, I'm sure you just saw something much worse. I mean, sure, contrast that one Alice in Wonderland adaptation that would be insulting the Mockbuster to call a Mockbuster. Newborn Cuties at least had its own audio. But it really, really, really makes you wish that they could have stolen the video from someone who could actually voice act. Not that I support plagiarism, mind you, but in this case I really wouldn't have minded much. I mean... Could you even imagine if they actually tried to do voice acting in the Alice in Wonderland adaptation? It's pretty obvious why they just use the radio play instead. I mean, personally, my story writer tries to make sure that even though he's lazy, he tries to make things look as good as they possibly can be. I'm not even going to bother with the plot. I mean, just really looking at this. Would you even care to know? Well, I don't, and this is my show. And you really need to know is that there are a pair of 10 minute shorts and you should just be thankful there isn't more. I mean, granted there's the rest of the Generation 3.5, but it probably never gets this bad. Again, I know this is aimed at much younger audiences, but this is insulting them. On so many levels, Baby Einstein had better animation than this, Leapfrog had better animation than this, pretty much anything else targeted to toddlers had better animation than this. 1 out of 10, seal of garbage, we're done here. Did you forget about me? Did you forget I can easily teleport away as I please? Well, but...
Sarada has failed. Predictable. I bet I could be beaten less quickly. You ought to know why. Could it possibly be because you're Batman? Because I'm Batman! Remind me again why I have to work with this guy. 